Hi everyone, this is Dan from headmedia.org. I'm going to try an experiment of creating a series of audio podcasts on my YouTube channel. I'm not sure how this series will evolve, but one of the main purpose of the series will be to relate my experience of my journey into this hobby, how I started, what I went through, what beautiful audio components I have discovered, which of them stuck into my memory. I will also try to bring guests into the future, guests that share our passion, close friends, shop owners and even people from the industry, depending on how it evolves. Welcome to the first episode of our exciting new journey into the world of high-end audio. As we embark on this adventure together, I thought it it would be fitting to begin with an introduction to the hobby and some key observations I've gathered over the years that really form the bedrock of this passion. I hope to provide you with the insights into the world of audiophiles and demystify some of the misconceptions that offer that often surround this hobby. We'll be deep diving into what it means to be an audiophile, the intricacies of sound and audio equipment, equipment, and the joy that pa- that this passion can bring to your life. But remember, being an audiophile isn't just about owning the most expensive equipment or having an extensive knowledge audio of audio technology. It's about the love of sound and music in general, the pursuit of what's, of that perfect melody, the feeling of being immersed into a musical moment, and the joy of discovering as you delve deeper into the realm of high-quality audio. So whether you're an experienced audiophile or you're just starting your journey into the world of high-quality sound, I hope you'll join me as we explore the art and science of sound in this podcast series. Welcome to the journey. I can't even wait to share the wonders of this hobby with you all. Sometimes I notice a negative trend towards our wonderful hobby. I've been hearing a lot of people saying sometimes, uh, no, you don't understand. I'm not an audiophile. This was said like if it uh, uh, something to apologize for. It seems like people are more visually driven. They get Uh, They get why high-quality images and videos are important, but they don't always see the same value in audio. As a result, hobbies related to audio often get sidelined or dismissed. But I'm on a mission to change that. I want to help people understand and appreciate the joys of high-quality audio. Through my experiences and insights, I am to show the power and potential of good headphones and other audio gear, speakers and other things related to this. After all, the world of audio has so much to offer, I believe everyone should give it a chance. I think that we are visual animals. This is why sometimes hearing audio and some of the hobbies related to it are treated with less importance. Again, my mission is to make people appreciate and understand this hobby better. I want to share the joy that this hobby brought to me, highlight the strong points of good headphones and related audio gear, and why why you should give them a chance. When I first listened to the Sennheiser HD 595's headphones, the Sennheiser dealer back in 2008, plugged into plugged straight into the laptop i was instantly hooked i had always seen headphones as the second best options for when you couldn't use speakers but after that experience my perspective changed dramatically over the years i've come to appreciate headphones as an essential part of top-notch sound system and from there my love for high quality audio just grew i can honestly say that i've enjoyed every step of my audio journey Nearly every upgrade has brought me satisfaction. Sure, sometimes I've taken a chance on a product without hearing it first, but most of the time I've been fortunate enough to test it and form my own opinions before making a purchase. Each upgrade gave me the chance to rediscover my music collection. It's like each song was given new life uh, it, I, and I was hearing it for the first time. One thing that's important to know about this hobby is that your ears and brain get better over time at picking up subtle details. You start to hear the texture in the voices more clearly, the resonance of chords, the rich sounds of violins and guitars. It's a journey of constant discovery and joy. This hobby that is growing on you and you get to appreciate it more and more over time. 
Once you embark on this journey, you'll start to experience music and sound in an entirely new way. There are times when I can't wait to get home, pour myself a glass of wine and lose myself into my favorite songs. There have been moments when I've engrossed into the music that I feel like I'm right there with the artists, living in the moment, caught between the chords, the instruments. That's what this passion is all about. The deeper I delve into high quality audio equipment, the deeper my connection to the music becomes. Now, we humans are visual creatures, so it's no surprise that our hearing doesn't always take center stage. In fact, many of us might struggle to remember different sounds or melodies. Years ago, I stumbled upon a rhythm, rhythm memory test online. I, it played various rhythms and you had to pick out the one that matched the original. I managed to get the score over 95%, but I noticed a lot of folks couldn't get it past 70%. That just goes to show how our ears aren't always our strongest sense especially our auditory memory. If you have a tough time telling different rhythms apart, you might find it challenging to spot differences in sound quality too. But here's the great part about, living, about diving into the world of high quality audio. As time goes by, you hear your ears uh, uh, get better and you start picking up the smallest changes and nuances in your music. Perhaps that's why this hobby has a way of growing on you. Another great tool for training your ears was Philip's Golden Years Challenge. I managed to complete all the challenges and earn my Golden Years badge. It was fun and generally helpful experience. Unfortunately, both tests are no longer available. I'm trying to, I, I will try to find something else, but for the moment, I don't have anything. One of the expected bonuses of this hobby is the people you'll meet along the way. I met some truly interesting folks, some of, the, some of whom have become very good friends. Pe people like Darku and others, all united by our shared passion for the sound. And let's not forget the team of Jack Fi and the other audio stores that, uh, where I spend many happy hours uh, in their audition rooms, just chatting about music, music and audio gear. So to circle back to my original point, I feel that many people have the wrong impression of that of, of what being an audiophile is all about. There's nothing wrong with loving sound and music, and you can certainly don't you certainly don't need to break the bank to be an audiophile. For less than one hundred and fifty or two hundred dollars, you can pick up a very good portable system or even a desktop system, and you can start enjoying high quality sound right away. Of course, you might find yourself getting drawn into higher-end gear to further enhance your listening experience, and that's perfectly fine, as long as you keep your priorities in check. Be sure to listen to gear before buying and judge whether the improvement in sound is worth the price tag. People who aren't into this hobby might question why anyone would spend so much on headphones or any related gear. But those same people probably spend more on things they're passionate about, like TVs, computer, tablets, phones, cars, bikes, or even clothes. The key is to understand that everyone has their own hobbies and priorities. Some hobbies might seem more easily justifiable because they're more mainstream, but that doesn't make them any more or less valuable than our passion for sound. After all, the joy and fulfillment we get from our hobbies are priceless. Some audiophiles I've met and are pretty shy about revealing how much they spend on their setups. They worry about judgment or misunderstanding. But honestly, there's no shame in investing in your sound system if it's bringing you closer to your tunes. On the flip side, I've also encountered folks who believe their setup is the top dog purely because it's the most expensive. But I gotta say, sometimes I've heard systems that cost a fraction of others, and to my ears and taste of this, they sounded much better than the pricey ones. Some audiophiles are confident in what they are hearing and don't trust their own ears or brains. I've noticed a trend where the placebo effect is used a lot to explain or excuse this. But there's a thing, but, but there's here's the thing. 
if the differences in sound are clear enough, trust yourself. If you are uncertain about audible differences, then by all means be cautious. You could even try some blind tests to be certain. But if you are confident in the differences you hear, don't let anyone who doesn't know your setup or your musical music plant seeds uh, music plant seeds of doubt in your mind. The journey is all about finding your own preferences, getting to know yourself, and learning to trust your own opinions. Remember, the most important thing before deciding what to buy or how something sounds is to listen for yourself. So go forth and start exploring until you find or even dream up your ideal system, no matter the cost. Now let's take a walk down memory lane as I share a little bit about my own audio journey and how it began and how it has unfolded since then. So sit down, enjoy your music, and be proud of your hobby. So let's start and see how I got into this hobby. A while back, when I was a student who also had a job, I had some extra cash to burn. I've always been a bit of a tech quiz, ever since, ever since my parents got me my first computer in the fifth grade. I've loved tinkering with it, always trying to make it faster and better. Anyway, one day I found out my old pair of head earphones, nothing fancy, just some Sennheisers that cost 40 bucks, had gone kaput. I saw these ads for 7.1 surround sound headphones from Logitech and thought they could be my next upgrade. One night, I chatted with my buddy George on a messenger, telling him about my idea to buy these Logitech headphones. But George, who's an audio enthusiast himself, made a face. He told me those 7.1 headphones were just marketing gimmicks and not really worth it. He instead recommended I check out Sennheiser 595, which cost 200 bucks. I thought, man, what's, what's so special about those headphones to cost that much? But then he told me he was planning to buy a pair of Sennheiser's HD-100 and Meyer Symphony 2, which together were going to cost him over 2000 bucks. I was dumbfounded, thinking he was absolutely nuts to spend that much on headphones. Still, I decided to look into those Sennheiser 595s and also their cheaper siblings, the 555s at that point. Reviews suggested that the uh, 555s were nearly as good as the 595s and at half the price. It seemed like uh, actually a better deal. So I went to the Sennheiser dealer in Bucharest, this was 2008 or something, only to find out they didn't have the 555s. They did have the small brother, the 545s, and the bigger brother's 595s. And offered me to try both. I thought, okay, I'll give them a listen, but there's no way I'm buying the expensive ones. They plugged the headphones into a laptop and I started with the 545s. They were okay, but nothing mind-blowing. Then I tried the 595s and I was blown away. The difference was night and day. The 595s had the broader soundstage and, got, and just sounded so much richer. I looked at the salesman and, I, and without a second thought I said, shut up and take my money. <laughs> That's how I got my first proper pair of headphones. I'll never forget the moment I first heard them. It was like a revelation. That was the day I began my journey into the world of high quality audio, and I've loved every minute of it since then. So in a way, I'll, I owe it all to a pair of 7.1 Logitech headphones that <laughs> I never bought. They unknowingly led me to, the, to, to something much better. So, I'll take them, I said, completely stunned by the sound quality I just experienced. It's, it was better than any computer sound system, my old Technic system, and uh, every other headphone I tried before, which, to be fair, the most expensive one I w was only 20 bucks until then. I was overjoyed with my new headphones, even though they cost me more than I had originally planned to spend. I went home, plugged them into my creative Extreme Audio sound card, and started going through my music collection. I felt like I was hearing all, all my songs for the first time. Each day, my appreciation for these headphones grew. I shared my excitement with my friend George, again. He seemed happy for me, 
but then he suggested that I, that I could enhance the sound even further with a headphone amplifier. I was dumbfounded again. An amplifier? Just for the headphones? It sounded crazy, but George was adamant it would take the sound to another level. So I started to look into headphones amplifiers. This led to me to HeadFi, an online forum for audio enthusiasts. As soon as I posted my first question there, I got a reply saying, Welcome to HeadFi and sorry for your wallet. I did not know what they meant at first, but it didn't take long for me to figure it out. At that time, there weren't many options for headphone amplifiers in Romania, and I had set a bu budget of 200 bucks for myself. After reading countless of reviews and discussing with George, I learned about Meyer's amplifiers. Long story short, I ended up dropping 500 bucks on Meyer, Meyer Cantate 2 amplifier and DAC. I was blown away by its design, build quality, and the significant improvement in sound. The bass was deeper, more controlled, and I could hear more details in the music. Plus, the soundstage seemed even wider. As I kept reading more reviews and posts on HeadFi, I realized that my headphones weren't fully utilizing the potential of the new amplifier. So what did I do? I started hunting for a better headphones, of course. That's how I met Darko, at Sandu from soundnews.net, who turned out to be not only a valuable resource in my audio journey, but also a great friend. But that's a tale for another time.